Hello class and welcome to another video lesson. We are on 3-2 today. We're talking about angles and parallel lines. Before I talk about this, I want to quickly bring you to another slide so you can see some of these relationships. Notice how AB right here is parallel to CD. Okay, those are parallel lines. And this EF is called a transversal. Remember that from yesterday's lesson? EF is called a transversal. And so when a transversal cuts a pair of parallel lines, it creates eight angles. You can see these eight angles right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And I want you to notice the relationship with all these angles. Notice how four of the angles are all the same. Four angles are all 80 degrees, and four angles are all 100 degrees. Okay? And you should notice how the vertical angles are congruent, 80 and 80, and 100 and 100. And notice how the adjacent angles are supplementary. They form a linear pair. 100 plus 80 is 180. Same thing with all those relationships in the bottom four angles as well. So is it coincidence that all four angles, or sorry, all eight angles, four of them are congruent, and the other four angles are congruent? Or is it meant to happen that way? Notice how, as I um, move a point E, and so that it changes the angle of the transversal. Notice I get something that looks like this now. 48.8, 131.2. Those are still supplementary. The vertical angles are still congruent. And notice how all four of these angles match all four of these angles. 48.8, 48.8, 48.8, 48.8. 131.2. So what I want you to get from this slide is that no matter how I move my transversal, when it cuts a pair of parallel lines, it creates eight angles. Four of the angles are going to be congruent to each other, and the other four angles are going to be congruent to each other. So that's what I want you to get from this. And I want you to notice that the, that the corresponding angles are congruent to each other. The alternate interior angles are congruent to each other. The alternate exterior angles are congruent to each other. Those few things I want you to notice from this slide. So now when we go to our notes, the first thing is, is that if lines are parallel, this symbol right here means parallel lines. If lines are parallel, then the corresponding angles are congruent, such as angle 1 and angle 5. Their corresponding angles, they're going to have the exact same degree measure. 4 and 8 are corresponding angles, and they're going to have the exact same degree measure. Corresponding angles are congruent. Next slide, alternate interior angles, if lines are parallel, then alternate interior angles, such as 4 and 5, they're going to have the exact same degree measure. Notice how it even looks like angle 4 and angle 5 are both obtuse. They're going to have the exact same degree measure. So the answer for this one is alternate interior angles are going to be congruent. Angle 3 is clearly acute. Angle 6 is clearly acute, and they're going to be congruent to each other. If angle 3 is 40 degrees, then angle 6 is also going to be 40 degrees. Alternate interior angles are congruent. Next slide, alternate exterior angles are also congruent when lines are parallel cut by a transversal. So 1 and 8 are alternate exterior angles. Angle 1 might be 110 degrees. If that's the case, angle 8 also has to be 110 degrees. Angle 2 would then be 70 degrees, so angle 7 would also have to be 70 degrees. Alternate exterior angles are congruent. And then this one, the last three answers have all been congruent. Don't get in the habit of always writing congruent. Consecutive interior angles, such as 3 and 5, don't say congruent. 3 is clearly acute, and 5 is clearly obtuse. So they're not congruent to each other. Rather, they are supplementary. Consecutive interior angles are supplementary. So we might have angle 3 as being 60 degrees. Angle 5 is going to be 120 degrees. They're not congruent. They're supplementary. OK. So now for this one, 
we're going to use the concept of alternate interior angles are congruent to find the measure of angle W. We want to know how many degrees this angle is. Okay, so here's what the first thing you're going to do when you write on your paper is you're going to draw another line that goes right through the vertex of angle W. So just like this, as best as you can, try to draw it parallel with these other two lines. Now that you have that, notice how you could find the measure of this angle right here. So that part of W, it's an alternate interior angle to this one and alternate interior angles are congruent. So if this angle is 41, then this part of angle W is 41 degrees. We're going to use that exact same process. This angle right here is alternate interior to this one, and alternate interior angles are congruent. So if this is 120, then its linear pair is going to be 60 degrees, right? Those two add up to equal 180. So then the alternate interior angle is also going to be congruent. It's going to be 60 degrees. So how many degrees is angle W? Angle W is 40 plus, oops, sorry. It's 41 plus 60. It's this 60 degree angle plus the 41 degree angle. So it is 101 degrees. There's angle W. Okay. Next question, find the measure of all eight angles. And there's lots of ways that you can do this one. The way I usually jump to right away is I usually see that the vertical angles, I see that fastest, I guess, are congruent. So the vertical angle is 123. And then I usually go to the linear pair because the adjacent angles that form a line are linear pairs and they're supplementary. So that means this one has to be 57 degrees, 180 minus 123. So then the vertical angle again is also 57 degrees. So I usually get those four and then I have to jump up to the top four angles and I have to use the relationships of alternate exterior angle or alternate interior angle or corresponding angles, whatever relationships you feel most comfortable with. If this one's 57, its corresponding angle is 57 degrees. If this is 123, then its corresponding is also 123. Or you might feel better with if this is 123, then the alternate interior angle is also 123. Or if you know this one's 57, its alternate exterior angle is congruent, it's also 57. So you could use any of those relationships to find the other four. Now this one's vertical to the 57, so it's also 57. This one is 123. If you know one angle out of the eight, when lines are parallel, cut by a transversal, you know the other seven. Last two questions of the day. <clears throat> we want to find the measure of all eight angles. We first have to find letter X. We have to find our variable. So what is the relationship between this angle and this angle? Well, they're alternate exterior angles, and alternate exterior angles are congruent. So in algebra, we say they are equal to each other. So 4x plus 20 is the same degree measure. It's equal to 8x minus 60. Now we're going to solve for x. So when we solve for x, we'll subtract 4x from both sides and add 60 to both sides. 80 equals 4x, divide both sides by 4, and we get x equals 20. Now the instructions say find the measure of all eight angles. So now I could find the measure of this angle. It's 4 times 20 plus 20. 4 times 20 is 80, and 80 plus 20 is 100. So this angle is 100 degrees. That means there's another three angles that are also 100 degrees. The vertical angle is 100. I'll go the alternate interior angle is 100. And then the other vertical angle is 100. I could also put 8 times 20 minus 60 and get 100 degrees there. Then the other four angles are the, all congruent, and they're all 80 degrees because it's the supplement of the 100. So 80, 80, 80, 80. Last problem for the day. 
we have these two angles. Now, a lot of people make the mistake and they set them equal to each other. Remember, consecutive interior angles are not congruent. One is clearly obtuse, the other is clearly acute. So you don't set them equal to each other. Rather, you add them up and you set them equal to 180. They're supplementary. So the 3x minus 36, you add the other angle, 5x, and you set that equal to 180 degrees. So 3x plus 5x is 8x. I'm going to add 36 to both sides. And 8x equals 216. Divide both sides by 8. 216 divided by 8. X equals, I think it's 27. Does that sound right? X equals 27. So if x equals 27, find the measure of all eight angles. So we're going to substitute 5 times 27. And 5 times 27 is 135. So four angles are 135 degrees. It'd be this one, the vertical angle. Here's the corresponding angle. And then it's vertical angle. They're all 135. So then the other four are all the supplement, which would be 55. I meant 45. Sorry, everybody. I meant 45 degrees. Rats. 45, 45, 45, and 45. I hope this made sense. The biggest thing you got to know is that when a parallel, when a set of parallel lines gets cut by a transversal, it makes eight angles. Four angles are going to be congruent, and the other four angles are going to be congruent. Let me know if you have any questions when you get to class tomorrow.